It is normally dry in the western desert, and the little rain that falls is unpredictable. But this is May 1965, and for several years there's been even less rain than usual. But the presence of the little zebra finches indicates that here at Yalara there is some water. Surface water, except after local rain, is rare, almost non-existent. What water there is must be dug for and scooped from wells and rock holes. These hold the lifeblood of the western desert. At Yalara, there are several wells. They're all dry, except one. This is four foot deep and has several inches of water at the bottom. The ground here is rocky. In the desert sandhill country, some wells have been dug 12 feet or more deep. At present, many of these are as dry as the much shallower ones at Yalara. The site of an old camp at Yalara. There are not many people living a traditional nomadic life in the western desert today, perhaps only a handful of families. For many years, there's been a drift from the fringe of the desert to cattle stations towns, missions, and government settlements. Over recent years, this drift has been greatly accelerated. Since 1960, roads have been made through the heart of the desert, and Commonwealth and State Welfare Department patrols have been able to contact most of the remaining desert dwellers. These patrols have provided them with a means of joining their relatives already living on missions and settlements. Until nine months ago, Minma Dubrula of the Nadadara linguistic group of the Western Desert, was living a traditional life. In August 1964, he and his family were met by a West Australian Native Welfare Patrol at a well called Tautewara and taken to Warburton Mission. We took Minma back to his own country to record something of his life, as it used to be only nine months before. With him went his family, two wives, two sons, an older foster son, and the daughter of his elder wife's brother. It seems that, over recent years at any rate, individual families travelled over thousands of square miles in the western desert. They would know the location of the wells in their own country, and, more important, they would know which wells were likely to have water. To make a mistake could mean death. In this material, an attempt has been made to reconstruct a typical journey of a family, a journey from one well to another. Nyungala is getting water from the last wet well at Yalara. She's about 11 years old. When she and her family arrived here several days ago, there were a few inches of water at the bottom of this four-foot well. The other three wells were dry. Now she has to dig out the mud at the bottom of the well to get water. Tomorrow or the next day, it may be dry. But tomorrow, Nyungala and her family will move to Tikatika. There should be water there. <laughs> 